relay it. <laughs> because the, uh, the, it's a belt-driven motor, the accurate, to reduce the accurate, you have to put a buffer in it. And this is basically what that does, is just how to reduce that accurate flow. Uh, just a relay, just a contact uh, coil, contact, set of contact, um, <laughs> between the motor and the control board to help reduce the accurate. Again, like I said, the 350, it's a belt driven component set up with full lead motors and shaft and bearings. Uh, it's not like these guys with a direct drive with the uh, fan wheel. These have a, uh, a belt driven component drive. So uh, your motor's not running up to speed, not a lot of stuff checking the belt, missing belt, uh, worn out belt, you know, full lead that may be binding. Those, those are some of the components uh, on the 350 that you might have to take a look at if you start running into an issue with the high limit structure. The wire diagram on these guys is uh, you know, very similar to the uh, 400 again. Everything goes through the control board, goes through the air cooler switch cycles, uh, all the sequence of operation is basically the same. Uh, it does have a free perfect cycle. It doesn't for say stop the motor, but it does that little free five seconds. It is checking for the motor, it's checking for the air movement, which that's what we kind of call a free perfect cycle. It's also, you know, like on the 400, the pre purge I mentioned this morning, purging out any unburned gas just for safety. Yep. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see. The on off switch, transformer, all your main components, gas valve, fan motors, thermostat, ignition, uh, igniter, ignition board. Now, if you're seeing these guys right here, and you're wondering what these are for, the 170, all these guys are ductible. Unlike the 400, unlike the kerosene, these guys are ductible. You have a 12 inch by 12 foot duct that you can attach to the unit. Um, and you can have either an end diffuser or a unit diffuser. Now, the one that Jim's got right here, this is a unit diffuser. You attach it right to the unit. You can attach it with these little wing nuts. Basically, it's just right here to these cage nuts, you can attach it right to the unit. These are unit diffuser. The other one that just flown out here have a 12 foot by 12 foot duct, a 12 inch by 12 foot, excuse me, that have a end diffuser. They can attach right to the end of your duct, and you can put it right inside your inside the construction area, inside the, the area you can keep. You can have the unit outside, so it's not in the way. Or you can duct it in a corridor, in the hallway, one with a uh, coupler, and the actual diffuser. This is an end diffuser that can fit out the end of the duct if you want to. You can dress it up a little bit. Now, if you notice this actual little deflector here, so you can actually have a, a, a two way deflecting uh, airflow. Now, go back to these wires. Why do you have these wires on the 170? That's sort of They're mainly for a tent application. I oh, you, could, you could use it. But what Dang is getting to, I mean, we originally designed what we're going to be talking about here for tent use. And it's called a, uh, a booster box. Booster box. Right. And that, that booster box, <coughs> we, we have sold it into tents, and some people have applied it to construction, too. I mean, these are dual use heaters, let's face it. There's a maximum length you can put on these guys is 12 foot. Just duct going. Yep, 12 inch by 12 foot duct. So any longer than that, uh, it's going to call the back pressure, a static pressure to the uh, motor. Uh, therefore, your heat exchange, the uh, heat in there is not going to be able to move out as fast enough, causing a limit switch issue. So, if you start seeing an issue where they have a duck on and tripping limit, see if they have too many duck legs, a lot of bearings in the duck will cause that too, so uh, keep an eye on that. That's where the, uh, the booster box comes in. They want to add additional length to it, 
by having that boot about to help move that mirror down further without having an issue with the limit. And that, where it says relay position one and two, there's an electrical interface kit. <coughs> the booster box and the heater will have a little relay in there that you set and a wiring kit. So when you turn the heater on, it sends power down to the booster box so that the booster box, fan loader, and the heater both start at the same time. You don't get any heat building up in here. Booster box turns on at the same time the heater does, picks up the hot air from the heater, dumps it down in these 30 foot long ducts. 30 foot long ducts have been put like at 90 degrees to each other, 180 degrees to each other. It's just to heat up a broader span of area. Right? And they're, they're pretty whole, is what they are. Uh, the, uh, for I don't know, if, you know, you've probably seen like these ducts that have holes in them every so many feet and so on and so forth. It's the same principle, they just deflect the air up to kind of move it around a little bit more. So, that, that's what the whole principle is behind that booster box. But it's only used on the one side. Yeah. Only on the one side. Yeah. The 80 you can't use it on because the 80 doesn't have the hoop behind the fan to really move that air down to anything else other than just to that 12 inch by 12 foot down. Now on a 350, you can use three of those. They are now 18 inches by uh, 12 foot. You can use three of those to make 36 foot long duck. Or you can use two of those in conjunction with the underfoot perforated duct. You can use that as well. That have the, the motor the capacity to help to help uh, move the air pump. So you don't need an extra booster, uh, extra motor, they have to help move the air. That that guy can move the air down a hundred foot long with no problem. Can you have You know, like Daniel was talking about, you know, this heater's got a pretty good size fan section in it. And it can blow air down through three 12 foot long ducts. You guys, get up, please. You know, if you want to see it, you know, don't be bashful or anything. I hope we've got limited space up here. <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, this has got a nice big one horsepower fan motor on this curve. And it has a capacity of air movement. And Gary mentioned this yesterday, you can stand out 50, 60 feet and feel this air just moving up. We started here, I could feel it going down to that overhead door down there without any problem. So it's got the capacity to take three 12 inch by 18, three 12 foot by 18 inch diameter guts and blow it out, no problem. Now, you use a perforated, hooked up in, in, hook up in one end of the other end of the other, just like this, one, two, three, all right? All right. Now, what about if I want to use this perforated gut? They ain't start about 100 footer, all right? Well, fine, you use two of them, and you just slap on that 100 foot duct. And we've done that for testing here. We've had two of the 12 foot ducts attached, and a 100 foot perforated duct. Now, when we send it, it's going to be all rolled up. And just to show you and explain how much air there is, we left it in rolled up condition, turned the heater on, and went boom. It just shot it right yeah. down, right? On both sides, right up. Yeah. 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 Without yeah. any problem whatsoever. So this thing's got a nice fan pad. It is belt drive versus direct drive. Right? So is that perforated duct closed at the end then? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, even on the, the booster box kits and all that stuff that we were talking about, those ducts are all closed. <laughs> Now, somebody might say, well, I don't need that 100 footer, that length, can I start rolling that back up a little bit and clip it? Don't want to do that. <laughs> you put back pressure against this heater and the high limit switch can turn off. So you want to use it in its full extension. On that note, the 350 on the high limit switches, there's actually two washers behind the high limit as acting as a spacer. These guys, the high limit actually come in direct contact with that burner. The 350 is actually a washer sitting right behind this leg to act as a little spacer, a little gap. So that it will actually uh, have a little higher temperature rating than it's actually rated for. So it's going to take a little bit longer for us to trip. But if it's tripping you very quick, then that means that something is definitely blocking that outlet or something is definitely causing that motor not to run as fast as it should. Now these guys don't have it, they actually come in direct contact. So, what Dan is talking about these washers, 
you guys want to get up? There's two little washers that act as spacers right here. So yeah, when you guys are servicing yeah, this well, gear, <laughs> and the owner's manual, the owner's manual will tell you this. Uh, this is the manual. This is on the 170, I'm sorry, this is on the 80 and 170. But if you go to, yeah, go to the 350 owner's manual after on the premier tab. The premier tab. Right. And this is a combo manual for both the, the dual fuel and the LP natural gas. Uh, go to page 20. Go to page 20. And it shows you the manual reset highland switches and so on and so forth. There's two limits. One of them is here, the other one's kind of tucked down behind the fan motor down toward the bottom of the fan housing. Right? Now, the one on this end of the heater, that's going to have a couple washers in there, and it shows it in that figure 20. Now, if you lose the washers, fine. We put the information in there so you can go to a hardware hang and buy one or two. Figure 30. Figure 30. I said 20. Okay, sorry about that. But you get the idea. Just make sure that if you see two washers, well, oh, man, I don't need those. Well, you do, because otherwise it'll trip out the future. Well, if you have it with Clayton and didn't notice it was two there when you took it out and dropped all and didn't notice it, that's what's going to happen to you. Put it on, you're like, well, it's still tripping, but let me switch it. There's an example. There's an example. Right there. Any, any tips on accessing the other island switch? Uh, well, I know what you mean because it's a little bit difficult to get back in there. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing you can do if necessary is you might have to take off the fan guard. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a little bit difficult to get to. Mm -hmm. yes. They have to pick out a little sweet spot. A little in the back. Yeah. They, 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 that sweet spot has to be located for testing mm -hmm. with ducting on it. Just so you have to find that point where it will trip according to what the test requirements are. So it's kind of dictated by that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really know if there's any types of tips that I can give you. Other than having a four-inch wet dryer all the time in your pocket. And not a standard screwdriver. I have a quarter-inch nut dryer to work with. So that would be my only tip. Also, don't park next to a fire hydrant. <laughs>